36 year old female has gestational diabetes. Her baby is at increased risk to have all of the following except A. Preterm birth B. Macrosomia C. Hyperglycemia soon after birth or D. Respiratory distress after birth. What's your answer? So these babies actually end up having hypoglycemia rather than hyperglycemia soon after birth. And we'll explain some of this in detail later, but for now, let's talk about gestational diabetes. The AAFP states that gestational diabetes occurs in approximately 5-9% to of pregnancies in the U.S. It's also something that's becoming more of an issue as the years go by. Now, hormones change during pregnancy, and these hormones can potentially raise blood glucose. Some women have an intolerance to carbohydrates and develop gestational diabetes. Generally, gestational diabetes happens during the second half of pregnancy. Now, there's different risk factors, including a family history of someone who has diabetes, diagnosis of prediabetes prior to pregnancy, a history of delivering a baby greater than nine pounds, uh, non-white race, and obesity. Now symptoms are usually mild. They most commonly are polydipsia and polyuria. Another super important thing to know about uh, gestational diabetes is that you're more likely to develop type 2 diabetes after pregnancy. In one systemic review, approximately 50% of individuals who had gestational diabetes eventually developed type 2 within 5 to 10 years. That's definitely concerning. Just briefly, I want to go over some of the glucose goals. Obviously, you can see the ranges here before and after meals. Uh, the first line treatment usually is the meal plan. And so that's something that should be educated to this type of patient with gestational diabetes. And physical activity is super, super important as well. Um, if these two things are not working, then potential insulin, that's going to be the thing that is the least likely to harm the baby. Some uh, physicians and healthcare providers are starting to use glyburide and metformin more often, but the studies are still limited on these medications. Now, let's talk about some handy NCLEX tips for nursing students who are either getting ready to take the NCLEX or at some point will be taking the NCLEX. So, number one, know the three P's of diabetes. The first one, polyphagia, which is basically excessively hungry. Now, sometimes it's very difficult when you're obviously pregnant to differentiate. Polydipsia, excessive thirst, and polyuria, excessive urination. And that may also be difficult in pregnant women. Number two, no test used to screen and diagnose this. According to the AAFP, a non-fasting one-hour glucose challenge test is done usually first. And if this is positive, then the three-hour oral glucose tolerance test is used to actually diagnose gestational diabetes. Now, it's usually recommended that these women eat a high-carbohydrate diet for up to three days before the test. Number three tip, know when the tests are usually done. Now, in general, the tests are usually done between 24 and 28 weeks gestation. But if there's a high-risk woman, uh, then they really need to have uh, it done at the first antepartum visit. NCLEX tip number four. Know that usually gestational diabetes develops during the second half of pregnancy, and not usually before 20 weeks. NCLEX tip number five know the risk factors for gestational diabetes. We did talk about this earlier um, in this video, and just going to reiterate, family history of someone who has diabetes, diagnosis of prediabetes prior to pregnancy, history of delivering uh, not at least a nine pound baby, non-white race, and obesity. These are just um, some of the main ones. NCLEX tip number six, this is super important. If you suspect hypoglycemia in these women, the first intervention should be to check the glucose. This is so important. Uh, it's a very straightforward, easy answer to that. Now number seven NCLEX tip, 
know some problems that can happen at delivery for these babies. Uh, some different problems that you should definitely know about that are super important is they can be hypoglycemic at birth, they can have respiratory distress, macrosomia, which basically that means they're bigger. With macrosomia, there's increased risk for adverse maternal and neonatal outcomes, so that's why that is always a concern. These babies are also at risk to have um, preterm births and birth defects as well. Now number eight, reasons for the hypoglycemia in these newborns. Now, this is super important to understand. In uh, women who have gestational diabetes, their babies are used to higher levels of glucose uh, when they're a fetus. And the infant responds by increasing insulin production. Now when the baby is delivered, they have this, they have this increased insulin in their system that may last for several days after birth. Yet, they don't have mom's higher glucose exposure anymore, thus the baby usually drops uh, when the, mis the maternal glucose is no longer available. NCLEX tip number nine, know the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. These babies can be jittery, they can have cyanosis, they can have apnea, uh, hypothermia, or low body temperature, they can be lethargic, they can have tachycardia, they can be diaphoretic. They can have poor feeding, even seizures. So these are important things to know. NCLEX tip number 10. Know these hypoglycemic numbers in newborns. This is super important. They're different from adults. And last but not least, our final NCLEX tip for this question is know some of the treatments used for hypoglycemic babies soon after birth. Uh, treatments such as internal feedings and IV infusions of dextrose. Well, this wraps things up for this video. We hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to subscribe, check out our Instagram page, and also Pinterest. And once again, make sure to subscribe for more educational videos.